All right, so my name is Ashley Peek. Um, I was born and raised in Los Angeles, California, and now I'm attending Los Angeles University, um, fourth year, clinical health science major, pre-dentistry. It's a lot, but um, my main passion and focus and goal right now is I'm working for the Spiritual Life Office um, here at Los Angeles University, and I'm the director for the Center of Outreach and Mission Services. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for your leadership. I've seen you since I've been here, and uh, yeah, you're an awesome leader, so thank you. Um, first question we have for you, um, since it's, again, we're focusing on women this month, um, what has it meant for you to be a woman in your community, in your circles, growing up? What has it meant for you? Honestly, so I, I grew up in a, um, I guess I would say a single parent household. Mm -hmm. I was raised by my mom, um, grew up with my sister, and, and we had our, aunt, our aunts around. Um, all my cousins are, are female. And so just growing up, I was just surrounded by women, like strong women, women who took care of their family, women who worked. And so growing up, it was always um, like, there was, we had no limits basically. Mm. It was just women supporting each other. We were you know, taking care of each other basically. And especially the support from my mom, it's always been you, you know, do think whatever of you want to achieve and you can achieve it as long as you work hard enough. And so, you know, it's obviously been hard, right? But through all of that, with the experiences I've had being a woman, um, all the opportunities that I've received so far um, at the school, at church, whatever, it's really just molded me to become a woman who knows, you know, I, if I know what I want to do, I can go out there and I can achieve it. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I was raised by a single mom and uh, I witnessed that, I think, uh, seeing my mom's effort and commitment definitely motivated to me, like, yeah, the sky's the limit. Like, you right. can do whatever you need to do, because if you're doing this on your own and you're raising two kids running around the house, making ends meet all the time, like, yeah, that's motivating. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Yeah. Um, what do you celebrate about being a woman? What do I celebrate? I think women are so powerful. Mm. Um, there's, there are so many things that, um, like, women have been achieving just really recently, because we've been, we're starting to get so many more opportunities, right? And so just being a woman, I just celebrate um, having all these opportunities, whether it be in the church or, you know, trying to go to dental school and all that stuff. I don't know. I just think that the opportunities are endless, and I'm just so thankful. And yeah, especially being a Korean American, um, I guess you know, there are some traditional values that are still stuck with being a Korean, right? But I definitely feel that, you know, with all these opportunities that I'm being given with higher education and all that stuff, every day I'm celebrating um, being able to like make all these choices and opportunities for myself. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, on the opposite side uh, of this question lies this question that we want to hear from you. What is what are pains you've experienced because you're a woman? What are struggles that you faced mm. because of who you are? Um, I think growing up, especially, um, there were so many beauty standards that women have, especially being Korean. It's very, it's a very strict, like narrow. Like if you don't fit into this box um, of like standards, then you're not really seen as you know really, really pretty or really beautiful or really just wanted by society. And so it was just kind of um, difficult growing up, growing up not being, you know, the, the, the stereotypical really thin Asian, you know, uh, submissive, right, type of woman. And so that was really hard, but I'm definitely, I grew so much as a person and I found ways to find beauty in individuality. And so that's just been something that I'm still, you know, working through. But I definitely think that, um, yeah, beauty standards, yeah. Um, I think we should just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta break it down. Yeah, yeah. Like, who sets that? Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, last question is, um, we live in a society that, though we've made so much progress, and though uh, we have people who have made change and stood in positions to represent change, uh, we still have a uh, patriarchal society. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to do whatever we can to move beyond that and push through that. 
What do you think people need to do if they want to begin to unlearn some of the things, the toxic masculinity or the toxic mindsets that we've learned that accept that there's like a difference? You know, um, what should someone start doing if they want to grow and be better so they can accept humanity as humanity? Okay, well, I think first of all, we just got to accept that women can work and also have children at the same time. Mm. I think um, it's part of who we are, right? Um, life exists because, right, the woman gives birth and has a child and all that stuff. And um, that's something that I've actually been noticing a lot more these days in different workplaces that I go. I'm seeing more and more moms um, in the workplace with their kids, or I'll also even see dads um, bring their kids to you know, work. And so I, I, I think it's a wonderful change. Um, it's one that I want to see more of. Um, almost, it's, I, I don't even know why we're trying to normalize it because it's basically just, it's life, right? So why are we having to push to like normalize such a normal part of like mm. life is already? But um, yeah, all those like things that just, we've almost been discriminated against in the past where we would lose jobs or we wouldn't be given opportunities. We mm. wouldn't be hired because, oh, well, we think you're gonna have a child in the next several years, so we don't wanna have you in the office, right? I think we should definitely try to move past that mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, try to like, accept that as a normal part of society. And, you know, I'm starting to see that on campus too. So it's, it's been a really good change really recently. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Ashley, for sharing with us at University Church your story. Uh, thank you for your leadership that you serve because every position that you've held and you've served so well is actually making a way for someone else. And so thank you for your commitment, your leadership, and you taking advantage of every opportunity that you've received. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, awesome.